At age eight, he started to discuss the aliens that were in deep freeze at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. In a world saturated with information, where news flashes and headlines fight for our attention, there's a lurking sensation that some stories remain hidden, veiled by shadows, and concealed by powerful forces. One question echoes in the minds of those seeking to uncover these hidden realities. What if there's something monumental, something so explosive, that it's being deliberately kept away from the public eye? And today, we're about to expose it all. What you're about to witness is not your typical expose. It's an eye-opener, a jaw-dropper, a revelation that could change everything. So join us as we journey into the unknown and dive into the depths of secrecy to unravel a big story that's being covered up right now. All signs unmistakably lead back to the heart of it all, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Even if its current state appears a void of secrets, imagine a time when every secret germinated there, like the seed of all mysteries. Picture the base as the birthplace of secrets, where the very source of this unexplainable story occurred. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base is a place resonating with whispers of hidden truths, as though it cradles the secrets within its very grounds. Imagine it as the keeper of secret history, where the unknown rests beneath the surface, like secrets in a treasure chest waiting to be unearthed. Among the ranks of UFO explorers, Leonard Stringfield emerges as a luminary figure, a fearless guard of the extraterrestrial hunt. Stringfield, a scholarly seeker tracing back to the 1950s, engaged in dialogues with a myriad of souls over the ages. His contributions reverberate as pioneering, casting a glow on the dark cover that cloaks the number of celestial crashes and the covert dance with power wielders. See his work as a lantern that dissipates shadows, the shadows of obscured incidents, the shadows of the government's veiled hand. Together, these strands of revelation, woven by his unyielding dedication, unfold curtains that interlace with the very thread of human curiosity and the universe's deepest secret. Imagine being there as a first-hand observer, delving into the remnants of a UFO crash at none other than the illustrious Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, a pivotal military stronghold in America during 1955. Let's journey back to the intriguing era of the 1940s and 50s, where we find Norma Gardner, a trailblazing woman whose profession defied convention. Norma finds herself at the heart of the Enigmatic Materials Division in Wright-Patterson, a division dedicated to analyzing the unknown and the extraordinary. This is a tale of secrecy and intrigue. The setting is iconic. A high security perimeter surrounds the base, reminiscent of the guarded pages of a classified document. Norma Gardner stands as a guardian of secrets, entrusted with a mission that transcends the ordinary. Her task, assigned with utmost confidentiality, involves documenting and categorizing an influx of unconventional items remnants from UFOs that defied the laws of known physics. Picture Norma in 1955 amid this covert operation, documenting the extraterrestrial oddities that grace her workspace. Day after day, she meticulously organizes an assortment of approximately 1,000 distinct artifacts, each an enigmatic piece of a global puzzle. A photograph captures the essence of each item, a visual proof of its unearthly origin. With deft fingers, she affixes a unique tag to each artifact, a virtual fingerprint that ties it to its cosmic journey. In this tale, curiosity is combined with mystery, and the air is thick with anticipation. Norma Gardner, a symbol of dedication and resilience, becomes the storyteller of these relics. Each tag she places, each photograph she takes, adds a layer to the chronicle of the unknown. As we ponder this extraordinary saga, Consider the hushed conversations echoing within the base's walls, the weight of responsibility on Norma's shoulders, and the thrilling uncertainty that hangs in the air. This is no ordinary inventory. It's a dance with the otherworldly, a glimpse into a world that challenges the boundaries of our understanding. So the next time you gaze at the stars, remember that the remnants of their journeys might just be nestled within the vaults of history as documented by the careful hands of Norma Gardner at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. While diligently fulfilling her duty one fateful day, she was granted an astonishing spectacle. A cart laden with otherworldly cargo embarked on a peculiar journey from one room to another. The contents of the cart were far from terrestrial. Lifeless bodies of extraterrestrial beings lay upon it. 
What captured her attention was the alien body and the ingenious method employed to preserve them. These unearthly entities were suspended in a state of arrested decay, their forms protected by a mysterious concoction of chemicals. Standing at a modest four to five feet, their figures bore a resemblance to humanity. With a curious twist, humanoid features marked their bodies, yet their heads were strikingly oversized compared to a typical human. The most different feature, however, lay in their eyes, which held a slanted and mysterious attraction. The tale takes another twist as Leonard Stringfield becomes a focal point in this otherworldly narrative. Emerging from the shadows, a man stepped forward, his revelation set to rewrite history. Martin, the bearer of secrets, contacted Stringfield with a story that surpassed imagination, a story of living extraterrestrial beings in the clutches of the military establishment. The nexus of this story was a conversation Martin shared with a close confidant, an Air Force colonel. Their discussions ventured into the realm of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and the mysterious beings that piloted them. These exchanges, though seemingly casual, held an air of concealed significance. Martin's instinct whispered that beneath the casual appearance, the colonel bore a treasure of secret knowledge, a secret yearning to break free from its bonds. The colonel's voice carried a weighty sense of significance during their final interaction. The conversation took an unexpected turn, veering toward the topic of the enigmatic UFOs that had stirred human curiosity for ages. What caught Martin's attention was the colonel's revelation about the UFOs needing to be bigger in size than commonly thought. Amid the unfolding dialogue, a shocking revelation emerged. The colonel disclosed to Martin the existence of two extraterrestrial beings, vibrant with life, being housed within the confines of Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. These beings from beyond Earth's realms were not merely captives but subjects of complex observation, their behavior studied carefully. However, as Martin listened, the colonel's tone grew sad, hinting at an undercurrent of concern. These aliens, though scientifically engaging, also bore an element of danger. The colonel mentioned an incident involving the Kern, a term disguised in mystery and an entity known as Hazard. These names seemed to symbolize the unpredictable nature of the encounter, a blend of fascination and threat. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base had apparently become a focal point for these extraordinary beings. Not limited to mere observation, the base had become a repository of curiosities, housing an array of human specimens gathered for an array of purposes. The tales stored in Stringfield's extensive records echoed Martin's own experiences, each containing fragments of a larger puzzle. These scattered narratives, like pieces of a challenge, collectively led to an astounding revelation. Living beings distinct from our own breathed the same air as those on Earth, confined within the secret confines of Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The Colonel's tale has been nothing short of astonishing for many decades. He boldly claims that extraterrestrial beings are, in fact, engaging in conversations with select individuals on our planet. And as far-fetched as it may sound, there's an intriguing twist. Substantial evidence hints at the existence of UFOs which arrive at a designated reception zone. But that's not where the peculiar journey ends. Hold on to your imagination because here comes the most jaw-dropping part. The alien bodies, delicate and uncanny, find their resting place in concealed subterranean chambers. These chambers are nestled deep below the surface of the military base, connected by an intricate network of underground passageways related to a labyrinth of light. Visualize the mysterious colonel leading the way through these tunnels, a modern-day guide to a world unknown. These private routes lead to colossal vaults, their grandeur rivaling the most extravagant of treasure collections. Something extraordinary takes place within these vaults, the safekeeping of profoundly sensitive materials as if guarding secrets that could reshape our understanding of the universe. And so, the Colonel's account becomes a hanging woven with threads of wonder and disbelief, a narrative that challenges conventional wisdom and beckons us to explore the enigmatic depths of existence. Greenfield's voice resonates, mingling with the intriguing story shared by the man called J.K. Picture this, a skilled computer missile maestro, J.K., possessing a security clearance that reaches celestial heights. Cast your mind back to the year 1966, an era of discovery and innovation. In the heartland of Wilmington, Ohio, J.K. emerges as a vital cog in the intricate machinery of a Nike missile program. Stationed at this crossroads of progress, J.K.'s journey interlaces with the very pulse of history. 
His steps frequently lead him to the hallowed grounds of Wright-Patterson, a place steeped in secrecy and significance. Through the corridors of this base, one particular moment stands out like a hidden gem in the vast expanse of time. Imagine JK, escorted with an air of reverence, traversing the depths of the earth. A secret facility nestled below the surface awaits him, a realm inaccessible without the golden key of top-level security. In the private heart of Wright-Patterson, the curtain veiling a shade of classified endeavors is drawn back for those who bear the mantle of trust. The narrative unfolds, painting a vivid background of Greenfield and JK's covert expedition through the corridors of time, secrets, and the relentless march of progress. Within the confines of this mysterious facility, he stumbles upon a mesmerizing sight. Nine glass cases stand before him, each exuding an aura of secrecy. The glass itself possesses a remarkable thickness, about an inch, that guards the mysteries within. Illuminated from within, the cases cast a soft, otherworldly glow that beckons curious souls to come closer. As his gaze penetrates the transparent barriers, a revelation unfolds. The cases cradle a collection of nine bodies, suspended in a weird stillness. These bodies shrouded in uncanny history evoke a sense of intrigue that tugs at Lenny's curiosity. His collection of reports, carefully accumulated, narrates the experiences of eyewitnesses. These observers, whether employed within the confines of Wright-Patterson or merely visitors passing through, all share a common thread. Encounters that defy the ordinary, Lenny finds himself driven by an insatiable thirst for knowledge. A desire to grasp the veiled truths hidden within the government's confines compels him forward. It isn't just the lifeless bodies that captivate him. It's the tantalizing possibility of living enigmas lurking beneath the surface, awaiting discovery. In this shadowy dance between the seen and the unseen, Lenny yearns to unearth the concealed wisdom guarded by the authorities. One can't help but start pondering about the extensive collection of extraterrestrial beings that might be resting in the secretive clutches of the government. Imagine remnants of beings not from this world delicately gathered from the wreckage of interstellar accidents. The journey of these otherworldly artifacts takes us to the legendary Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, but it doesn't stop there. It plunges us into the heart of a covert subterranean realm. Picture this, a secure secret hideaway concealed far below the surface, the very epitome of top secrecy. It's a sanctuary designed to be impenetrable to prying eyes, housing mysteries that defy the ordinary human imagination. The very air that we casually breathe becomes a weighty burden for these alien guests. So, they're nurtured with a cocktail of exotic gases, a concoction that sustains their mysterious existence. Visualize tanks lined up like sentinels, administering this vital cure to our interstellar visitors. It's as if science fiction and reality twist, giving life to an alluring background. He boldly asserts that even the government possesses its own mysterious creation, still fully operational. However, this enigmatic craft had encountered a glitch during its voyage and eventually descended not too far from the quaint town of Whitewater in Indiana, back in the mysterious year of 1969. Reports suggest that this unusual incident involves extraterrestrial entities, some of them no longer living while others seemingly remain animated. These remarkable beings are rumored to have been safeguarded in a secret stronghold nestled within the confines of the renowned Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. During the mysterious night of July 3, 1947, a bewildering event unfolded as a UFO dramatically crashed just about 20 miles south of Socorro's peaceful town. This incident occurred near the uncanny score of peak, shrouded in its own air of complex. The aliens they found had a surprisingly human-like appearance, albeit with some intriguing deviations. Standing at around five feet tall, these otherworldly visitors possessed bald heads and an absence of body hair, lending them an almost ethereal air. Yet, despite these superficial resemblances, it became all too apparent that they were not from our world due to some distinct anatomical differences that set them apart. As the events unfolded, the task of recovering these unearthly bodies was assigned to a small group of specialists. These individuals embarked on a mission of both scientific importance and unprecedented curiosity. The curious bodies were carefully transported to various secure locations, a measure taken to ensure utmost secrecy and safeguard against potential threats. Among these sanctuaries was the renowned Wright-Patterson Air Force Base steeped in secret. This base, known for its deep involvement in matters beyond the ordinary, 
became a haven for the extraterrestrial remains, a nexus where human curiosity and cosmic mystery converged. The night of July 3, 1947, etched itself into the annals of history as a night when the veil between worlds briefly lifted, revealing beings that challenged our understanding of the universe, the events that unfolded near Socorro, and the subsequent journey of the alien bodies to places like Wright-Patterson Air Force Base remain a testament to the enduring allure of the unknown and the insatiable human desire to unravel the secrets that lie beyond the stars. In the fascinating realm of white matter census, a solitary body has emerged as the chosen subject, capturing the attention of not just one, but two eminent scientists. As recounted in an intriguing IP report, the enigmatic Dr. Deadlift and the astute Aunt Lee find themselves summoned to partake in a singular autopsy endeavor. A remarkably intact cadet, selected for careful examination under the skilled hands of the cryptic Charles Charles Ray. Charles Charles Ray, a figure of captivating complexity, held dual titles as both a surgeon and a distinguished MD. However, his story runs deeper still. His recruitment into the ranks of the Air Force Special Weapons Program was no ordinary tale. It was the hand-picked decision of none other than the head of this mysterious division, an act that speaks volumes about the caliber of Charles's expertise. As the curtain rises on this curious scene, the convergence of scientific minds and the aura of secrecy intertwine. The cadet's body awaits a canvas for exploration, promising insights that might alter the curtains of understanding. The air is thick with anticipation as Dr. Deadlift, Aunt Lee, and Charles Ray stand on the height of discovery, ready to unlock the secrets that lie within. He located his daughter amidst a maze of memories, and as we conversed, her eyes held a story untold. Do you reckon your father might have dissected an extraterrestrial being? Inquiring, his curiosity piqued. She leaned in, a conspiratorial grin gracing her lips and shared, Oh, absolutely. Back in a 63, Dad had a front row seat to an event that was as otherworldly as it gets. The year was 1963, a time of whispers and mysteries, and her father, whom we'll call Beanie, stood at the epicenter. He had witnessed what appeared to be a cosmic collision, an alien craft meeting Earth's soil in a spectacle that opposed belief. The very air seemed to hum with secrets that only a privileged few could unravel. Yet, as the government's net of secrecy closed in, it swallowed every shard of proof, every strand of truth. Beanie's encounter with the extraterrestrial was scrubbed from the public's gaze, cloaked in classified shadows. The authorities, zealous in their pursuit, left no room for whispers or wonder. And so, under the shadow of threat, Beanie's lips remained sealed. The government's whispered threats echoed in his mind, a chilling reminder that silence was not just expected but demanded. Decades came and went, each passing year etching lines of reticence on Beanie's face. The passage of time only deepened the conviction that the cost of speaking out could be astronomically high. Imagine the burden of a secret encounter weighing on a man's shoulders for all those years, the truth held hostage by fear, by the haunting specter of consequences unimagined. Beanie's tale, once a blazing meteor in his memory, now lay dormant, smoldering like embers, waiting for a spark of courage to reignite its blaze. So there we were two souls connected by curiosity and the possibility that reality might be stranger than we dared to believe. We held within us the pulse of a secret history, a narrative that whispered of alien alloys and covert caution, a narrative itching to burst free from its secret cocoon. Nurse Beanie held tight to her extraordinary experience for decades, keeping it shrouded in secrecy. It wasn't until the year 1995, a span of more than 30 years marked by a profound silence, that Beanie finally broke her silence. With a heart brimming with courage, she decided to unveil the remarkable tales she had concealed for so long. Her narratives were nothing short of incredible, and they flowed forth like long-pent waters finally released. Yet, almost as if summoned by the resurgence of her stories, ancient threats began to rear their heads once again. In the midst of this resurgence, a figure named Colonel Stevens emerged into the scene. His identity, like a shadowy enigma, was shrouded behind his title. He reached out to Beanie, his voice carrying a hint of intrigue and a touch of intimidation. His reason for contacting her was rooted in rumors. He had caught wind that she had begun sharing her experiences with a group called MUFON. 
It appeared that Colonel Stevens intended to remind her of a history that the government had crafted long ago. The recurrence of this unsettling pattern of intimidation echoes throughout the pages of the Leonard Stringfield files. A glimpse into those files unveiled a hanging woven with tales of informants who, much like Beanie, stepped forward only when the promise of complete anonymity was assured. The military, it seemed, held its own perspective, a perspective that could cast long shadows of fear. In this intricate web of narratives, one could discern the delicate balance between disclosure and the shadows of the past. The brave sharing of stories collided with the specter of official warnings, a dance between the desire to reveal and the impulse to conceal. It's intriguingly suggested that the government has established an agreement with extraterrestrial visitors. In this rather spine-chilling arrangement, they're allowed to take some of our citizens for study, but in return, they grant us access to some of the most advanced technology. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.